Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received in Qudaybiyah Palace today the former Chief Minister of Rajasthan, former Minister of State for External Affairs, Vazandara Rajay, in the presence of the Ambassador of India to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Alak Kumar Sinha, where they discussed bilateral relations between and means to promote them in various fields between the two countries, as well as regional and international developments. His Royal Highness praised the depth of friendly historic relations between Bahrain and India, which extends to thousands of years of cultural and commercial exchange. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Bahraini-Indian relations represents a distinctive example of fruitful cooperation based on the principles of mutual respect, visions, objectives, and the common goal of achieving mutual interests between nations and peoples. His Royal Highness affirmed that the relations between Bahrain and India is wide and diverse with the capabilities and resources of the two countries and and a promising economic and investment foundation that could serve as a platform for deeper bilateral cooperation. He welcomed the growing relations between the two countries, thanks to the efforts exerted by the leaders and their governments, which provided the means that contribute to facilitating investment and encouraging the private sector in the two countries to enter into joint projects that drive growth in the two friendly countries. His Royal Highness noted the developments India is witnessing, making them among the most promising countries economically and technologically, as well as India's growing influence on the international scene, expressing Bahrain's aspiration in further promoting cooperation between the two countries to achieve mutual goals. His Royal Highness also expressed appreciation for the Indian community in Bahrain and its role in promoting development in Bahrain. On her part, the former Chief Minister of Rajasthan expressed pride in the strong relations connecting India and Bahrain and the joint efforts to develop these relations for the benefit of the people, praising the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to strengthen the relations between Bahrain and India through his continuous interest and cooperation in various fields. She also expressed admiration in the achievement of the Kingdom and its strategic importance in the region. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa attended yesterday evening the Thai Cultural and Food Festival, stressing the crucial role of culture as a bridge to strengthen interstate relations and bolstering positive cooperation. His Royal Highness also affirmed the importance of events and exhibitions in highlighting cultures and civilizations and expanding cooperation. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister was received by advisor to the Thai Foreign Ministry, Khaisiri Anamal. His Royal Highness toured the festival and the accompanying events, which reflect long-standing Thai history and civilization. His Royal Highness said that Bahrain and Thailand boast millennia-old civilizational heritage, which represent an enriching asset that contribute to strengthening bilateral relations between the two countries in all fields. The Premier loaded the strong historic relations binding the two friendly countries and peoples, commending the event which represents a facet of cultural cooperation between both nations. His Royal Highness also hailed the event's lineup for the festival, reflecting deep-rooted Thai civilization, thanking the organizers of the festival and the participants for their efforts to ensure the success of the cultural event. His Royal Highness wished Thai leaders, government and people development and progress. For his part, the Thai ambassador paid tribute to His Royal Highness the Premier for gracing the festival and consolidating joint cooperation. He added that His Royal Highness the Prime Minister has dedicated efforts contributing to strengthening bilateral relations in all fields, which serve shared interests and meet the aspirations of the two friendly countries and their peoples. The Thai Authority for Tourism and Authority of Thailand Middle East held the festival at the Gulf Hotel in partnership with the Thai Embassy in Manama and Gulf Air. The event featured events reflecting deep-rooted Thai civilization including culinary art and fashion.
in a wonderful cultural celebration organized by the Royal Thai Embassy and the Tourism Authority of Thailand, Bahrain and Thailand celebrate their friendship and close partnership on so many levels. The Thai Festival 2019 in Bahrain takes its visitors on a journey to the heart of Thailand to celebrate its authentic culture, values and cuisine. Relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Thailand goes back many years and uh, strengthens uh, each and every day. And we always see an array of the Thai jewelers at our Jewelry of Arabia exhibition annually. Tonight we see an array of the Thai products and their food delicacies and it's a wonderful opportunity. And we would like to take the opportunity to wish the Thai community uh, living in Bahrain a joyous festival and uh, to always ensure and reassure them that here in the Kingdom of Bahrain they are home away from home. The opening included dazzling traditional Thai performances and an exclusive Thai silk fashion show by famous Thai designers. Really happy that have a chance to come to show in in Bahrain, and then in the future we might have a chance to combine the Thai culture with the Arabic song, and we can create a new show for all the Bahrainese people here. It's a gastronomic extravaganza bringing together Thai restaurants, offering a wide variety of Thailand's famous rich flavor combinations and special appetizing unique cooking styles with tasting and a live cooking show. Not only food, Thai exhibitors are displaying their traditional handicrafts, textiles, beauty products, jewelry and much more. This event really enhances trade and industry and relationship as well as creating partnership with the Thai people and try to also, on the other hand, attract them to do uh, investment and in partnering in manufacturing. We to match your population in your country, uh, Berlin people, is a really nice, really nice and really welcome to us, to everyone, people in Thailand. Bahrain and Thailand are showcasing a unique bond and friendship, not only between governments, but also peoples. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Qudaybiyah Palace the President of Prince of Songkla University, Dr. Niwat Kiwar Pradup, who is currently visiting Bahrain and heading an academic and administrative delegation from the university. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed the Kingdom's keenness on bolstering cooperation with Thailand in all fields, especially in the field of education, by exchanging expertise and benefiting from Thai's distinguished universities and educational and academic institutions. His Royal Highness added that developing the educational sector is considered one of the main pillars on which countries depend for development and that Bahrain is keen on increasing cooperation with various countries with leading educational experience, including Thailand. His Royal Highness welcomed the visit of the President of the Prince of Songkla University to Bahrain, expressing aspiration that it will contribute to bolstering cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness hailed the Prince of Songkla University, its academic caters and its contributions to the scientific and academic levels. He asserted the role of knowledge and culture in achieving rapprochement and increasing understanding between countries and peoples, noting that the Kingdom's keenness on supporting the educational sector is a must and developing it according to the latest global standards. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister noted the importance of scientific research in developing various sectors, especially the medical and health ones, urging to increase cooperation between the two countries' academic institutions in the field of scientific research that aims to develop the medical and health sectors. For his part, the President of the Prince of Songkla University expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his keenness on developing bilateral relations, recalling with pride His Royal Highness's receiving the honorary doctorate in political science in 2009 in appreciation for his achievements in the sustainable development field. He highlighted His Royal Highness's wise vision on all regional and international affairs, which reflects the long-standing experience and its effect on development of Bahrain.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa deputized his personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Hindu temple in the Kingdom of Bahrain. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, Ambassador and Senior Officials organized by the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, and this is Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King to all the participants in the ceremony, affirming His Majesty's pride in their role in the development of Bahrain in various fields. His Highness commended holding the celebration, which reflects the depth of ties and friendly relations between Bahrain and India, and Bahrain's status in the region as a country of peace, tolerance and pluralism of religions and cultures. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah praised the warm reception and the participation of senior officials and religious figures from brotherly and friendly countries, those who maintain the temple and the foreign communities. His Highness affirmed that in the kingdom, in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, it will remain a country of development, civilizations, religion and cultures. He expressed pride in the role of the board of directors of King Hamad Global Center, this is Bahrain, and foreign communities in supporting Bahrain's status at the international level through its efforts and contributions in promoting the good image of Bahrain and the development it witnesses. His Highness toured the temple and hailed the efforts of those who maintain it and the organization of the celebration. He also commended achieving humanitarian goals to promote the values of peace and tolerance within the framework of coexistence. This is an auspicious day for Bahrain. This is an example that's been here for 200 years of existence, the Hindu temple in Bahrain. It's an example of many examples that go with thousands of years in our relationship with India, with the Indus Valley, with Mesopotamia, with the rest of the world. All the people from around us come and live with us here. And they are part of our fabric. You know, uh, we are living in 21st century and I believe that this century can be more humane better for living together in peace uh, but we need to to fight three allies of evil which are very efficient and very present very cheap um, these are ignorance mentioned here but also indifference and fear if we don't know if we don't care and if we are scared to say something to do something on behalf of voiceless or defenseless people. If majority in Bahrain, if majority in our countries is able to stand up and do something, say something, care for the others, I think we can make this century more humane. The King of Bahrain and the government of Bahrain, that we can practice our religion openly and the permission of the temple is just heart touching. And you could see how the people of our community, you can see the happiness in their heart which is shown in their face when they can celebrate all the festivals out here away from India. They are so far away from India, but still they feel that we are in India. So I have no words to express the happiness which I see in their eyes. 
His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, uh, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received officials from the Hindu temple Sri Krishna, which celebrates its 200th anniversary. His Highness affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's leadership set Bahrain into a model of religious coexistence, thanks to His Majesty's initiatives to promote peaceful coexistence and establish tolerance and dialogue among all religions, cultures, and civilizations at various levels. His Highness cited that Bahrain will remain the country of Renaissance, civilizations, religions, and culture during the era of His Majesty the King. During the meeting, His Highness expressed pride in witnessing this event, noting that Bahrain coexisted peacefully with different cultures and that it's considered a strategic meeting point for all nationalities. He noted that thousands of visitors celebrated the Holy Festival one of many events held peacefully in Bahrain. His Highness noted that His Majesty the King is proud of the peace and efforts made to establish peaceful coexistence among people, which makes Bahrain an important global center for interfaith understanding and dialogue, stressing that the Kingdom will maintain this approach under all circumstances, wishing that Bahrain's experiences set an example for the rest of the world.
His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad delivered the following speech. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it gives us a great pleasure to welcome you to this event to celebrate the 200 year anniversary of establishing the first Hindu temple in Bahrain and in the region. It gives me an honor now to invite Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa for his speech. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, it's my utmost pleasure on behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to welcome you here and to see such an esteemed gathering with a, such a rich diversity. I don't mean the, inside this uh, majlis, but in our country as all. Well. Honestly, we are proud, we are very lucky to be witnesses of our great, noble, wise ancestors, particularly speaking of His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed al-Fatih, rahimahullah. 200 years ago, 1819, during his reign, he actually has ordered to build a small, moderate house in the heart of Manama, and to be designated as a Shri Kisha Hindu's temple. 50 years later, in 1869, I hope my math was right, during the reign of His Highness, my great-great-grandfather, Sheikh Isa bin Ali al Khalifa, rahimahullah, ordered to expand the temple because of the rapidly growing needs of the faithful. But alhamdulillah, we had this ongoing for generations. Today, as well, we see the same thing the same temple, the oldest in the, in the region serving around 150,000 Hindus in Bahrain. And I'm not surprised. It doesn't surprise anyone here in Bahrain because at this moment, you know, this is not unusual thing in Bahrain. Bahrain is a civilization of 7,000 years plus. And during those 7,000 years plus, we all lived in prosperity. We all lived in peaceful coexistence. Bahrain, with the main reason of that, during all these past years, because it was a strategic partner to the world. It links the West to the East due to its geostrategic position. Bahrain as well, has never hindered any other faiths and practices and worships. It has ever since been living in a peaceful coexistence. I mean, I, I can easily get drifted away speaking of Bahrain and the benefits that Bahrain has served the humanity. But again, you know, we all believe as Bahrainis in two things. The moment a foot touches the ground of Bahrain, you are considered a Bahrain, for sure. And the second thing is the moment we always say that, the moment you drink the water of Bahrain, you never leave Bahrain. If you leave it physically, your heart and mind stays in Bahrain. The ambassadors know this. The ex-ambassadors definitely know this. <laughs> the people who had contracts in Bahrain, short or long, the people who visited Bahrain, the people who came for a day, they will always be blessed, as we have heard the beautiful news of His Holiness being granted with a child today. <laughs> so alhamdulillah, Bahrain, we say in Arabic, is mabruka, which is blessed by Allah. And it always remains in the minds 
Well, sorry, once again, I get carried away with Bahrain. Let's go back to our, pro uh, with our subject. You know, a couple of days ago, we have celebrated and thousands and thousands of Hindus and people have visited the temple celebrating Holi. Next month, just next month, Bahrain's many churches will be overflown by Christians. The month later, inshallah, we will have Ramadan and Eid al-Fitr. We are lucky to see this peaceful coexistence in Bahrain. And we are, in the name of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, tell you how proud he is to see the success that has been done in Bahrain. It's not the government. It's not an order. It's by the people of Bahrain. It's by the expats whom are living in Bahrain. Those are the ones whom are the real enablers and the ones who contributed to make Bahrain continue um, this peace. So once again, you know, it really saddens me, especially in this troubled world, to see people can't live the way we live in Bahrain. But anyways, I hope the world sees Bahrain to learn from our humble experience, to learn from His Majesty, to learn from the people of Bahrain, to learn from our noble and wise ancestors, and to take it as an example. If they take 1% of it, I'm 100% sure the world is going to be a better place. Let me end my speech by quoting His Majesty. He said, we sincerely believe ignorance is the enemy of peace. And so we must learn from each other, love each other, and only by embracing and celebrating our differences will we be able to drive out of the perfase of darkness that threatens humanity and allow faith to illuminate our path to peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For his part, priest Goswami Vishal expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his interest in all religions in Bahrain, especially the Hindu temple, and praised His Highness Sheikh Nasser's reception of the Hindu temple delegation. The priest praised Bahrain's celebration of the Hindu temple's 200th anniversary, affirming the interest of His Majesty the King and his continuous efforts in settling an example of peaceful coexistence. The Hindu temple officials present a commemorative gift to His Highness Sheikh Nasser at the end of the meeting, thanking him for the warm welcome. Well, it was uh, a privilege to, really to, to be here for the, the celebration. Uh, it's remarkable that uh, uh, a Hindu temple should be right in the heart of, of, of Manama in an Islamic country. Uh, and it just reflects, I think, the hospitality of the, the, the Bahraini uh, nation, kingdom, uh, to, towards uh, the, 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 uh, the faith communities. My first visit to Bahrain, but uh, as soon as I entered the temple, the atmosphere was just like India and uh, the happiness that I saw in the faces of the Vaishnavas in Bahrain, that is what we call the devotees, as named as Vaishnavas. They were enjoying and I really thank His Majesty and His ancestors for giving the permission to practice our religion in open and that's been 200 years now and that's what we are celebrating. 
The Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs held a meeting today chaired by the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs, Jawad bin Salim al harayid The committee reviewed the topics and memoranda on this agenda, which included a number of draft laws and resolutions prepared by the government and took recommendations on them in preparation of submission to the Cabinet. The committee reviewed a number of proposals submitted to the government by the Representatives Council. The committee prepared a draft of the government's response on the proposals and decided to submit them to the cabinet to make a decision. The Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh hailed the launch of the national plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforce the values of nationalism, affirming that it reflects the royal vision towards achieving societal stability and reinforces the values of citizenship, moderation and commitment to national unity, which are the principles of the civilization project of His Majesty the King since its launch. He noted the efforts of the Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Committee to follow up on the implementation of the plan, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the leading initiative which will contribute to creating a generation aware of the values of citizenship. He added that this initiative will also contribute in promoting national belonging among society and maintain security and stability. Al Saleh affirmed support to the plan, increased efforts to develop national legislation and criminalize all threats to national interests rests and gains. The University of Bahrain has celebrated the launch of cooperation with the International Platform for Digital Skills Development IDEA, which is under the initiatives of His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, aimed at encouraging the youth learning and entrepreneurship. His Royal Highness Prince Andrew honored 37 students from the English Language Center at the University of Bahrain, who won the bronze badge through the participation in the IDEA competition. Minister of Education, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Majid bin Ali Al Nuaimi praised the university's cooperation with the International Platform for Digital Skills Development, one of the most important initiatives of His Royal Highness Prince Andrew in the field of digital education, which offers the students the opportunity to develop their skills in projects, innovation, and entrepreneurship, consequently promoting their chances in labor market. The minister highlighted Bahrain's keenness to benefit from international initiatives. To to boost educational services in the higher educational field. He noted the progressing friendship, relations and cooperation between Bahrain and the United Kingdom in various areas. President of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Riyad Hamza, welcomed the role of His Royal Highness Prince Andrew in encouraging the youth, learning and entrepreneurship. He said the platform program is available to students to improve their skills in solving problems and innovation thinking. Earlier in the day, His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, the Chancellor of British University of Huddersfield, toured the Royal University for Women in the presence of Education Minister and officials. His Royal Highness toured the Art and Design Exhibition Centre at the University and met with the outstanding students who presented their projects in the fields of fashion, textiles, drawings, interior design and architecture. A letter of intent between the two universities was signed to promote cooperation. We believe we can develop a very long, sustaining, meaningful partnership with the University of Huddersfield, which will open up great opportunities for students from both RUW and also from Huddersfield University. Today's visit by His Royal Highness the Duke of York was very important because this visit really set the tone for the partnership and with his support, with the support of the Ministry of Education in Bahrain, we can really move forward and develop these great opportunities for our students and faculty. That is part of our strategy as a university to, to become global and to have partnerships uh, all over the world including the United Kingdom which is a very close friend of, uh, of the Kingdom of Bahrain and we hope through this partnership to develop uh, faculty exchange, uh, student exchange, uh, develop programs together, workshops and conferences. And today we're very excited because these Royal Highness get to meet some students and they show their work, whether it was in design, whether it was entrepreneurship, and I think that was a good opportunity for our students to, to showcase their skills and what they learn here. And I, I believe, and it seems that uh, His Royal Highness was impressed with uh, what the girls can do here. This visit by His Royal Highness Prince Andrew is very, very important because it opens horizons for us to have academic linkages with the University.
University of Huddersfield. Now this university is an old university in UK and you know they have a lot of research interests. They also have interest in the area of entrepreneurship and we can work on some joint projects with them. His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, visited expert Bahrain at Beit al Tajar as part of a visit to the kingdom to attend the concluding ceremony of Pitch at Palace competition. The competition was launched by Prince Andrew in 2014 to give entrepreneurs an opportunity to showcase their projects and gain the connections they need to move it forward. Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani, the chairman of the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Council, welcomed His Royal Highness Prince. Andrew on arrival. He presented him with a briefing on expert Bahrain's goals, missions and visions in promoting Bahrain's exports and boosting their qualities so as to enhance the kingdom's status as an international trade partner by providing the needed tools and services to develop non-oil exports. Export Bahrain is one of the main projects overseen by SME's Development Council as part of the Coordination Committee's initiatives to support the labor market and promote the role of the private private sector institutions. It has launched last year in cooperation with the Labour Fund Tamkin to promote Bahrain's experts and improve their quality in order to enhance the kingdom's standing as a global trade partner. The Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister affirmed that Export Bahrain is a reflection of the government's trend through Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 to diversify revenues and back the national economy. He also loaded the role of Pitch at Palace competition in promoting the entrepreneurship sector, stressing that export to Bahrain is considered as an important step to consolidate Bahrain's pioneering status in this respect. His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, met the participants in the second edition of Pitch at Palace competition at Tamkin headquarters. He was received by Tamkin Chairman Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa and Chief Executive Officer Dr. Ibrahim Mohammed Janahi. The meeting was part of his visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain to attend the concluding ceremony of Pitch at Palace competition, which will be held tomorrow evening. The Duke of York was briefed on Tamkin's role in strengthening the entrepreneurship in Bahrain and its support to programs and initiatives in the private sector development. He was also informed about the projects submitted by the participants in the second edition of Pitch at Palace competition, stressing the importance of the contest in creating a sustainable environment for communication and exploration, while enhancing the opportunities for expansion of their projects and their implementation on the ground. Tamkin Chairman Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa hailed the Duke of York's visit as well as his keenness on meeting Bahrain entrepreneurs and encouraging them to participate in the competition. Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi visited the Bahrain International Circuit today to follow up on the media center and the radio studio preparations and arrangements. He expressed a pride in the ministry's cooperation with the BIC and the respective governmental agencies in the provision of requisite technical, technological, and media services and facilities for use of local and foreign media correspondents. The minister commended the BIC for hosting the Formula One championships over 50 years thanks to the kingdom's most advanced organizational logistic security and media services and the presence of 1,200 Bahraini volunteers teams to welcome and serve the guests to Bahrain. The minister affirmed that Bahrain continues to reap the fruits of this leading project under the patronage and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirmed the project's positive results in the aviation, transportation, hotel and restaurant and commercial boom, as well as the BIC's contribution in boosting the kingdom's developmental accomplishments in the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Al Rumehi stressed the Information Affairs Ministry's keenness to provide comprehensive and distinctive media coverage for the Bahrain Gulf Air Grand Prix for Formula One race, depicting the entertainment programs and parades 
points inside the circuit via holding live radio interviews with officials and the public from the heart of action in the BIC. An exclusive photo shoot of the McLaren Bahrain Parade was held today at the Arc Abita building, featuring an exciting array of McLaren's supercar models, led by the youngest British driver to ever compete in the Formula One. McLaren's 2019 F1 driver Lando Norris was at the event, which was held today at the Arc Abita building, between the south and north core lobbies. A number of McLaren supercars, driven by their respective proud owners, part participated in the glamorous drive that commenced in the afternoon from the Four Seasons Hotel at Bahrain Bay, with Norris leading the way. The parade stopped at the Arc Capita building for a photo shoot before continuing onwards to the BIC where it culminated. Organized by McLaren Bahrain in partnership with Mumtalakat, the parade served as a visual treat and a unique kickoff to the much-anticipated 2019 F1 Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix that will take place from the 29th to the 31st of March 2019 at the Bahrain International Circuit, a wholly owned subsidiary of Muntalakat. I started racing when I was uh, just under eight years old. Um, I'd been karting for almost a year before that, but um, yeah, my whole career pretty much started when I was eight. My first time in a McLaren was um, uh, Budapest, Hungary. That was my first time um, I was with the team, the, all the pressure was on and uh, I had my first experience of a, uh, of a proper Formula One car, um, which is a moment I'll never forget of course, but uh, yeah, that was a, a very cool moment for me, um, everything I, I had worked up to and uh, yeah, finally got to drive for the first time in Hungary, it was um, two years ago now. The whole atmosphere of McLaren is a uh, is very good at the moment um, and uh, I'm enjoying every minute spent every minute you know I, I spend with the team at the track away from the track all together so um, yeah McLaren are awesome I just uh, I hope I can give them a good, good enough results. Today is about uh, our customers and uh, we've uh, gathered our customers today with with in the presence of Lando Norris who's very gracefully given up some of his time to join us today uh, to meet uh, our, 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 our customers and to do um, a parade. So we're, we're here today, as you know, at the Arcapita building, home of Mumtalakat, which is the majority shareholder of McLaren here in Bahrain. And uh, we're very pleased to welcome our customers on this parade. Um, and really, for us, it's giving something back to them uh, because it's, it's about experiences for us. It's about, um, you know, we see McLaren in Bahrain as a family and we like to get our customers involved as, as much as we possibly can. So that's, that's what today is all about. But the bigger picture for McLaren is that it's uh, a brand that's growing very, very well, considering um, the markets are quite tough at the moment, but McLaren are doing uh, incredibly well despite that. And we're very proud to represent McLaren here in Bahrain under Canoe Motors SPC. Um, uh, I think we're very privileged to have this brand. The Marshalls team is the backbone of any race. Those few hundreds of people who will moonlight as Bahrain's F1 Marshalls for three days in March are what will make the difference between a fine race and a great race. More on this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. For a successful Grand Prix to be pulled off at the BIC, it's not just traffic and crowd management that's essential. Almost 1,000 race marshals will be working around the clock to ensure the success of the biggest occasion on the country's calendar, from the pits and the paddock to trackside. We've got different types of marshals. Uh, we have a lot of people coming from outside that would love to join us uh, in the Bahrain race. Uh, we have approximately 30% female marshals in most of the positions, uh, a lot of them in the leadership positions. A lot of them are, are some of the greatest communicators that we have. Most of the people that come and, and work with our marshals or most of the drivers tell us that our marshals are happy. They're passionate, they love what they do and it shows on their face and it shows from their behaviors. The team go through several training courses from the run-up to the showpiece event to ensure things run smoothly and that it secures and enhances the safety of all those involved, including participants, officials, spectators and the public. 
Every year we um, do things a bit more differently. Um, we learn from our previous years of racing and we also, thankfully, we can build on our experiences outside of Bahrain. Um, since we've done races outside, we've done recently Saudi and that was a big learning thing for us. Um, we also, luckily this year, had a big international event before Formula One and so um, all our new recruitees got the chance to um, have really big practical training there before they even got the big theoretical training. So that was, I think, a big um, learning curve for everyone. Just like any other year, um, once we're done with the season, we as a training committee, we gather around, we put the feedbacks, we put whatever thoughts we have, and then we start all over again from the next season, starting with local races and international races. And after every race, we put the feedback of that particular race to develop the marshals and to take them to the next level. What we look forward this year is just like every year. Number one is representing our Kingdom of Bahrain and run, showing the whole world that how Bahrain are professional or Bahraini marshals are professional in operating the race and finalizing the race and enjoying after the race. As for what we're looking forward this year especially is that Bahrain is hosting the 999th race in the history of Formula One. So it's one number to 1000. So it's a great number for us. We're looking forward to mark this number on the history table of Formula One. The Bahrain Marshals team are made up of both men and women who enjoy being part of motorsports and will this year be assisted by volunteers from abroad, each of which who play an integral role in making sure the Formula One race passes without a glitch. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Each year, the motorsport enthusiasts and avid fans from all over the world gear up to witness an epic display of mastery on Bahrain International Circuit's track. We are one day away from the thrilling battle and tickets are almost sold out. More in this report. The home of motorsport in the Middle East, Bahrain International Circuit, is front and center once again on the international stage with the 2019 Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix grabbing the global spotlight. Ticket booths across the kingdom are witnessing continuous activity and wide public interest. Amazing response for the ticket sales. I can proudly say that the corporate lounges, which is Definitely one of the hottest products at the circuit are sold out a month ago. Um, Paddock Club is witnessing an amazing sales growth over last years. And um, main grandstand is almost sold out, I think today or tomorrow. Uh, university is almost sold out, turn one with few tickets. So we are really pleased of the ticket sales. Uh, I'm urging everyone who didn't buy their tickets to actually go now and come and buy their tickets now because honestly they might regret if they didn't. I'm uh, really excited for the F1 this year. I heard there's an extra day where you get to go in and see the cars, all the cars that are racing, and that's really exciting to you know be up close and personal with the cars that are going to be on the track. And of course, not to mention the concerts. I mean, Kaigo, he's an international player, so that's just going to be amazing, like off the charts amazing. Motorsport enthusiasts and Formula One fans from all over the world can't wait for the race, the adrenaline rush and the wide array of fun activities. Excitement about Formula One is uh, something we have been seeing it on TV and now we have the pleasure to see it on live, <laughs> which is uh, like a privilege. The Formula One in Bahrain is a global event and we would like to share the excitement, the fever. Um, I'm a fan of uh, uh, mechanic uh, sports, I'm a private licensed pilot, so I, I like the, the sound, the, the smell of the gasoline. So I will be with you on the last next uh, four days from 20, 28 till 31st and I really I will uh, return back to France with these all memories from Bahrain, a kind people and uh, really uh, I will miss you a lot. According to the busy ticket booths and rapid online sales, Bahrain International Circuit is prepared to host staggering crowds this year, offering its visitors an experience like no other.
The delegation of the Parliamentary Division concluded its participation in the 11th meeting of the Parliamentary Coordination and Foreign Relations Committee held in Jeddah, where the committee discussed the items on the agenda on bolstering relations with the European Parliament. During the meeting, the Parliamentary Coordination Committee adopted the rules of procedure of the Committee for Enhancing Relations with the European Parliament and the proposed scenario for addressing reports issued by the international parliamentary bodies on the GCC countries, as well as for recommending the continuation of the visits with the European Parliament. The committee has also submitted the proposals for the legislative councils and parliaments in member states to be presented at the 12th periodic meeting of the speakers of Shura, representatives, national and nation councils to be held next Thursday. The National Bureau for Revenue, NBR, held another interactive VAT workshop for professionals working in the retail and wholesale sectors, during which the NBR recapped general and sector-specific VAT concepts, including invoicing and filling. Following a question-and-answer session, 90 representatives from 48 vendors were given the opportunity to visit the unique interactive demo center that provides innovative learning experiences to ensure effective implementation of that. Today's workshop is a continuation of the series of workshops organized by the NBR to provide an inclusive platform for all stakeholders from the public and private sectors to ensure the smooth registration of companies with an annual supply of 500,000 Bahraini dinars to 5 million Bahraini dinars by June.